I called 2024 the year of perovskites. We got our first commercial shipments and some record-breaking efficiencies. But 2025? Well, this was the year perovskites went from interesting lab tech to you can actually buy these. Oxford PV shipped the first commercial batch to a U.S. solar farm. California startups landed major infrastructure deals, and Chinese manufacturers started licensing the technology for mass production. More importantly, researchers solved problems that have plagued perovskites for years. We got self-healing materials that repair damage from heat and moisture, cooling systems that boost efficiency by over 12%, and manufacturing techniques that broke the 34% efficiency barrier, which shatters silicon's theoretical 30% limit. So let's recap what actually happened this past year, what it means for solar's future, and what breakthroughs to watch for in 2026. I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. This video is brought to you by Surfshark. Solar is already one of the cheapest ways to generate electricity, but perovskites could actually push that advantage even further. 2025 was the year they started proving it in the real world. As a super quick refresher, perovskites are crystal materials that can push solar efficiency beyond silicon's theoretical 30% limit. They're cheaper to manufacture and can stack with silicon to create tandem panels. The problem has always been durability, though, because they degrade when exposed to heat, moisture, and oxygen. That's what makes 2025's breakthroughs so significant. Perovskite's weaknesses haven't stopped manufacturers from starting to commercialize panels. In September of 2024, Oxford PV announced the delivery of its first batch of 100 kilowatts of perovskite silicon tandem cells to a utility-scale customer in the U.S. Now, according to the company, this was the first deployment of its kind in the world. Since then, Oxford PV has entered a patent licensing agreement with Chinese PV manufacturer Trina Solar, enabling them to manufacture and sell its perovskite panels. In the words of CEO David Ward, it's a milestone in our mission to make perovskite PV mainstream. Meanwhile, over in the U.S., perovskite commercialization has been steadily climbing. It seems fitting that California, the state with Eureka as its motto, is home to so many major players. Companies like Tandem PV, Swift Solar, and Kylux had some pretty sunny summers. In June, Swift Solar announced a partnership with American Tower Corporation, which develops communications infrastructure. As CEO and co-founder Joel Jean pointed out, this collaboration is notable because it's not only an example of active commercialization, but also a real-world application of perovskite tandem cells outside of utility-scale solar. In July, Calix sent out its first shipment of its active glass product to an unnamed solar manufacturer. Now, you might be like me and wondering why some of these customers are remaining undisclosed on these examples. Can't know for certain, but I can say from my own experience that this is not unusual for a client half of a tech partnership like this to want to avoid publicity. This has been the case in companies I've talked to in the past right here on this channel. But what we do know about Active Glass, though, is interesting. Calix takes a simplified approach to perovskite PV by stripping it down to the bare essentials. The company doesn't produce perovskite tandem cells. Instead, it developed a perovskite-coated glass that takes the place of the front glass on your typical panel. Now, according to Calix, the active glass can be integrated into existing manufacturing processes. Attaching its perovskite power-ups to panels is just a matter of using pre-installed charge collection tape, allowing module makers to create a hybrid tandem model that's at least 6% more efficient. That same month, Tandem PV received a $4 million grant from the California Energy Commission to scale up its prototypes and speed up commercialization. CEO Scott Wharton said that the plan is to begin offering utility-scale customers tandem panels in 2026. That covers the business side of perovskite production, but let's shine some light on the lab work that's powering improvements on the way. Before we get into those breakthroughs, though, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Not too long ago, I was recently attending a geothermal conference, and between the hotel and conference Wi-Fi, I leaned heavily on Surfshark VPN to keep my browsing secure and private. I've also been using Surfshark for what feels like forever and get so much use out of it. Surfshark is a fast, easy-to-use VPN full of incredible features that you can install on an unlimited number of devices with one account. But that's not all. Even shopping services will sometimes gate prices based on your location, so you can change your location to make sure you're getting the best deal. They've also just launched an email scam checker that uses AI to spot phishing attacks in your Gmail. It works through their Chrome extension and catches suspicious content and malicious links before you ever click on anything dangerous. It's pretty cool. Right now, they're running a special deal. Go to surfshark.com slash undecided or use the code undecided at checkout to get four extra months of Surfshark VPN. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out for yourself. I've been using Surfshark for years, and I love it. Don't miss out on this great deal. The link's in the description below, and thanks to Surfshark and to all of you for supporting the channel. All right, let's talk about those improvements that are on the way. 
You might have heard of a TV or video game iceberg, but what about an iceberg pyramid? Pyramids are already a common feature of silicon PV cells. Now these are no Pharaoh's tomb. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The pyramids that pattern silicon cells are on the micrometer or even nanometer scale. For context, a human hair can be anywhere from roughly 17 to 181 micrometers in diameter. Just imagine one of those layered, studded, or spiky belts that you might have seen around your middle school or on your middle schooler's waist, but much, much smaller. Turns out these pyramids' geometry makes them handy for both preventing reflections and trapping light. As a result, using textured silicon surfaces in perovskite silicon tandem cells can amplify conversion efficiency by a lot. That's the technique that the Chinese PV manufacturing giant, Longi, used in its two-terminal crystalline silicon perovskite tandem solar cell that broke the world record this year. It boasts a conversion efficiency of 34.85%. Again, that's beating the theoretical upper limit of silicon solar cells at around 30%. So what does any of this have to do with icebergs? Well, there's a problem. These types of textured silicon substrates, specifically those in the sub-micron range, are powerful but not practical. You can't use standard manufacturing methods to produce them, which puts a serious damper on their economic pull. So what do you do? In August, researchers from Zhejiang University in China answered that question by proposing an alternative, industrially textured silicon, or ITS, with micron-sized pyramids. The industrial stuff is both already compatible with existing manufacturing processes and capable of enhancing light trapping. Normally, ITS would further complicate adding the perovskite layer to a tandem cell. The research team avoided these issues by filling up the valleys formed by the pyramid structure with silica. And with those valleys filled, the pyramids transform into, well, icebergs, buried beneath a more evenly distributed perovskite layer. Now, with perovskites blanketing the lower components, like a duvet on top of your bedsheets. The researchers managed to reach an efficiency of 33.15%, which they claim is the highest reported to date for tandem cells of this type. Here's hoping these benefits are just the tip of the iceberg. Like I said before, perovskites tend to be more fragile than their silicon counterparts. But what if we could boost their resilience and their efficiency with a spot treatment? In June, we did a little roundup of recent advancements in self-healing solar. And one of these was the result of an international collaboration between the City University of Hong Kong, the University of Oxford, and Monash University over in Australia. They created a self-healing agent for perovskite panels. It not only helps to buff out their natural imperfections, but it continuously reactivates as the cells are exposed to heat and moisture over time. In other words, it's perovskite healing factor. So what's the science behind this magic material? Well, it's a type of passivator, basically a coating that shields a product from degradation. Think of it like a step in a solar skincare routine. A passivator patches up defects on the surface of a panel the same way moisturizer smooths away dryness and prevents cracking. This one is unique because it's a living passivator. When it comes into contact with water and heat, it continuously releases compounds that dynamically heal perovskites over time. Now, this kind of perpetual patchworking might be limited to the lab right now, but this is not the only path to self-healing solar. Researchers at the University of Sydney in Australia and the Riken Center for Sustainable Resource Science in Japan are also hard at work preparing their own materials. The former is using a heat treatment known as annealing in their quest to bring perovskites to space, and the latter is developing a fluorescent copolymer that can tank the damage caused by chemical solutions all across the pH scale. So there's potentially a burgeoning solar skincare industry out there, but what if PV panels had another thing in common with human skin? What if PV panels could sweat? Okay, I know you might be thinking, why would you ever want this? Well, it's simple. Humans sweat as a means of evaporative cooling, which is a type of passive cooling that doesn't require any outside intervention. It's incredibly effective. Just through sweating alone, a healthy adult can dissipate about a thousand watts worth of heat. This is appealing to solar manufacturers because even though it's their job to bake in the sun, there's only so much heat that PV panels can take. The higher the temperature rises, the lower their efficiency drops. For each additional degree Celsius, there's about a 0.5% decrease in efficiency. When panels can reach temperatures as scorching as 65 degrees Celsius or 149 degrees Fahrenheit, you can quickly imagine how the problem can escalate. So how do you teach a PV panel to sweat? Well, it turns out that a dab will do you. Well, a dab of hydrogel, that is. Hydrogels are networks of polymers that love water. They're used in industries far and wide from agriculture to medicine to food. By applying this squishy, porous material to the back of a PV panel, you can take advantage of its ability to absorb water during the night and release it over the course of the day. That's exactly what research teams from Thailand's Vistec and Saudi Arabia's Kaust have been up to. In February, Vistec revealed the results of its hydrogel testing. 
a temperature drop of 23 degrees Celsius or about 73 degrees Fahrenheit, which equated to a 12.3% gain in efficiency. Even better, Vistex gel keeps it light, weighing just 11 pounds per square meter. That's significantly less in comparison with other options like phase change materials. And just a few months later, Kaust reported that its hydrogel reduced temperatures by an average 12.5 degrees Celsius or 22.5 degrees Fahrenheit, improving efficiency by about 12.2%. And Kaust gel stands out, or should I say sticks out, because it can easily stick and attach to already existing solar panels on the back, as opposed to replacing whole arrays. How's that for escaping sticker shock? So far, we've discussed how researchers are iterating on solar tech in a lab setting, so how about we take a peek at some of the more speculative work? What might still be to come? Now, capping off the end of the year comes with one last bit of perovskite tech. In December, we talked about how researchers are teaming up perovskites with graphene to create PV panels enhanced by both. Graphene works well to cancel out perovskite's weaknesses. It's strong, yet light, a great conductor, and most importantly, robust and water resistant. You know the exact two traits perovskites aren't known for. That's why perovskite and graphene could be a match made in heaven if we can figure out the manufacturing. So far, First Graphene, Halo Cell Energy, and Queensland University of Technology have been working together to develop perovskite graphene cells. In September, First Graphene announced that its Pure Graph product, which is a graphene powder additive, doubled the efficiency of Halo Cell's perovskite panels by up to 30.6%, while cutting down production costs by a whopping 80%. So how could that be possible? Well, first graphene claims it's because its graphene formula is compatible with roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing, which is the cheapest way to produce perovskite panels. By using this approach, expensive materials like gold and silver are no longer needed. When combined with perovskite's economic benefits, you end up with a very affordable panel. Well, at least that's the idea. That isn't the only collaboration working to make perovskite graphene a reality, though. Another spans three countries. Graph Energy Tech, or GET, operating out of Switzerland, the Taiwanese Perovskite Solar Corp, or TPSC, and the University of Cambridge in England. Together they form GET PSC. I wonder if that's meant to be interpreted as GET Perovskite Solar Cells? Anyway, like the Australian teams, a major focus of GET PSC's efforts is bringing down costs by using graphene. As I mentioned before, silver is expensive. It's also subject to degradation when incorporated into perovskite components. Get PSC is experimenting with using graphene in place of silver for the electrodes and PV cells, potentially solving two problems, cost and durability. As it stands, their graphene material can be integrated into multiple existing manufacturing methods, including screen printing, doctor blading, and slot die coating processes. And we've spent a lot of time talking about perovskites so far, but there is an upcoming rival. Meet Kesterite, a crystalline special blend of four or five easy to acquire metals. Copper, zinc, tin, and depending on the method, sulfur or selenium, or sometimes both. Kesterite brings several benefits to the table. Abundance, stability, high efficiency, and low cost. But that deserves its own video, which I'm actually working on, so stay tuned for that. It should hopefully be out in a few weeks. So there you have it. Just in 2025 alone, perovskites have benefited from quite a few new advances that help bridge some of their inherent weaknesses, from self-healing properties to passive cooling systems. But what do you think? Was this perovskite's year? Which technologies are you rooting for as 2025 comes to a close? And what topics do you want to see covered more in 2026? Jump in the comments and let me know. You can also check out the extended cut of this video over on Patreon, where I go into how quantum dots could impact solar. And speaking of that, these videos take a team to make, a team of humans. Real research, real interviews, real feedback from experts, no AI slop. If that matters to you, Patreon support helps a ton. The link's in the description if you'd like to join, but honestly, just watching like you are right now is awesome. So thank you. And check out my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, we'll keep this conversation going. Keep your mind open, stay curious, I'll see you in the next one.